I'm trying to force myself to be more energetic. Ugh, my heart's thumping like crazy. I might as well have a laid-back so what attitude and go ahead with high energy. Yeehaw! Ah, but be careful that your batteries don't run out. And just like I say each time, don't... I... I never... expected the funhouse itself to be the ultimate weapon. Oh well, let's just press on ahead. Is it really alright to accept a situation so easily? I mean, that's not what's important. The thing that's really important is the killer who used the building structure. Like who's Mekumaru's murderer? But is it really okay to believe the building is the weapon? There's no way I'd lie at such an important moment. I don't want to die either. What happened to the bastard who kept saying how much they didn't mind dying? He's right. There was a time when I thought I could become a stepping stone for your hopes, but I will sincerely retract that remark. Retract? I'm disappointed too, you know. If this was a murder for the sake of hope, I'd happily sacrifice myself. <laughs> you say such falsehoods, per usual. There is no such thing as murder for the sake of hope. Forcibly sacrificing others for one's own desires. I see. It's fine. Let's just leave him alone and find out who killed Coach Nekomaru as fast as we can. Just so you know, it's not like I'm getting hungry or anything, you know. Uh, Akane! You're drooling waterfalls? Anyway, if the killer used the building's structure, why don't we think about how they used it? How they killed Nekomaru? It might be better if we clarify the cause of death first, don't you think? I see! That's it? I think he might have died from falling. Died from falling? If the funhouse's secret is that it's a structure where both towers and houses are vertically connected, then the killer made use of its height and caused Nekomaru to die from falling. Are you saying they pushed him off? Where'd they push him off from? That, I don't know yet. <laughs> don't just make things up when you don't know the method. Where in that building would you even be able to push someone off in the first place? It might be possible in the tower. You could push him off the fourth floor when the elevator is on the first floor. Did you forget how the elevator functions? When it's on the first floor, the door on the fourth floor won't open. <laughs> Saying he died from falling is truly incorrect. Hmm. But my gut is going crazy right now. When the elevator... You can't go through the door on the fourth floor. Hmm. It'd be impossible to shove off the victim from- Then, how about after locking Mekamaru inside that they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first and made use of the drop. Hold on! Did you forget the as long as there's a moving object inside, the other door won't open. Which means the elevator- That must be the threshold of that elevator. When the elevator is on the- You can't go through the door- It'd be impossible- Then, after locking the- They moved the elf and made use of the drop. Hold on! Did you forget- As long as there's a moving object- No, that's wrong! That sensor should only work if something is moving. If Nekomaru wasn't moving inside, the elevator sensor wouldn't have detected anything. Could it be his sleep mode? When Nekomaru's goodnight button is pressed, all of his functions shut down and he enters sleep. If he's in sleep mode, the elevator sensor wouldn't have noticed him, right? I see. So that's how... However, even if they move the elevator in that manner, 
Nekomaru would have just moved along with it. There would have been no drop for him to fall and die from. Yes? That's what I was about to explain before Kazuichi interrupted me. Silence, pest! Now you're calling me a pest?! If you arrange it a certain way, you can cause the drop within the elevator. So you're telling us all to think about the arrangement, right? That arrangement is... The hammer is suspicious. Isn't it about time we went over the pill? What about the oil on the floor? The doorknob on the floor it seems suspicious. I agree with that. Didn't the doorknob have scrape marks on it? That might have been where it got scraped by the wire. Is that the same wire that was tied around Nekomaru? The tip of that wire was tied into a loop. If the elevator moved while that loop part hung from the doorknob... If they did something like that, he would have been suspended in mid-air! That's right. He was suspended in mid-air. Huh? The killer tied up Nekomaru with the wire while he was in sleep mode. Tied the tip of the wire into a knot and hung it on the doorknob to the fourth floor. With that, they move the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor of Grape Tower. And suspended Nekamaru in midair. That's right! He was so well hung! You better not finish that sentence! The killer took advantage of the elevator's unique feature, only the floor move. By doing that, they created a drop so Nekamaru could fall to his death. Too easy! So what if they created a drop? There's no way you can make him fall and die with just that! What? If Nekomaru is suspended in mid-air like that, then how do you get him to fall? Because if he's suspended in mid-air, he won't die if he doesn't actually fall! Even if they suspended Nekomaru from a How would they make him fall? There's no one in the tower to push him off! There's no way they could do that! It doesn't mean someone had to push him off. It's possible that he fell on his own. What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Crap! What? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep. If he was sleeping, there's no way he could do that to himself. <laughs> Now's the time, but in that case, you still won't be able to explain moving the elevator with Nekomaru in. It's just impossible. End of story. What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep mode, right? If he was sleeping, there's no way he could do that to himself. But in that case, you still won't be able to it's moving the elevator with Nekomaru is just impossible! End of story! What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Crap! What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Crap! What? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep mode. Allow me to cut through those words! What do you think would happen if Nekomaru woke up while he was suspended upside down in midair? What are you saying? Like, how would he even wake up? He has an alarm inside his body. As long as it was armed, it would have deactivated his sleep mode. Which means the killer set the alarm before they suspended Nekomaru. If you woke up from an alarm and realized you were hanging upside down and had no clue why, if something like that happened to you, you would start panicking a lot, right? Instinctively, your body would start moving. Mekamaru probably did exactly that. And then, in order to make it fall from the force he was generating, the wire was hung on the tip of the doorknob so it would easily slip off. In actuality, the scrape marks caused by the wire were near the tip of the doorknob, right? 
but Nekomaru didn't fall because the wire came off, right? He fell because the entire doorknob came off. When Nekomaru awoke, he must have struggled much more than expected, which caused the doorknob to break off. Was that unexpected for the killer too? Well, that's probably it. If they knew it'd leave behind evidence like that, they would have at least tried to do something to cover it up. I see. So that's how Nekomaru fell to his death. Do you finally understand now? Yeah. It appears it's just as Miss Sonia said. I'm just a pest. Isn't that right, Miss Sonia? If I'm a fucking pig, you can say so! No, I believe you gave your all. Hey! Why aren't you teasing me anymore? This guy... He gets off on this! So thanks to that alarm, Nekomaru ended up falling while he was still hanging upside down. That doesn't mean he just crashed straight into the floor. Of course, you know that too, right? I see! When Nekomaru fell to the floor, he ended up colliding with the pillar. Isn't that it? Finally, the pillar! So that's how the pillar shattered, and why oil was spilled all over the place. See? I told you the pillar was the weapon. Well, the pillar was a bonus. It's not even clear if the killer intended that, or if it was just a coincidence. At this point, it is quite difficult to find a clue that will lead to the killer. Then what about the alarm? I'm positive the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m., and if we map it out from there... Hold on, baby gangsta! Stop calling me Baby Gangsta! What'd you just say? Did you say the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m.? You didn't check it yourself. Nekomaru's alarm was set for 7.30 a.m. Nah, that's impossible. Because even though I slept in a little, I still got to the tower at 7 in the morning. N now that you mention it, so did I. There was no way I could be late for Monokuma Tai Chi, so I looked for Great Tower before 7 a.m. And if we found Nekomaru's body there, it would have been before the 7.30 a.m. alarm went off. It appears yet another contradiction has been birthed. How were you able to discover Nekomaru died at 7.30 a.m. when you went to the tower at 7? That's what I want to know! But the alarm inside Nekomaru's was set for 7.30. Nekomaru died because of that alarm. This time of death and the time to buy one of those must be an illusion. The killer probably did some tamper with how he messed with the clock inside Nekomaru's chest. That's gotta be it! We headed for Grape Tower. Before 7 a.m. But the alarm inside was set for 7. Nekomaru died with his time of death and one of those must. Killer probably did some probably mess with the clock inside Nek. No, that's wrong! No, the clock inside his chest was a radio clock, so it would have been impossible to mess with. So you're saying there's no way the killer could have tampered with a clock? Maybe the clock Miss Sonia saw was the one that got tampered with. The clock inside Grape House? No, I checked all the clocks inside the fun house. Oh, that's what I asked you to do. So you really listened to me and checked all the clocks. And because of that, I can confidently declare that all the clocks had the same time displayed. 
If there's no possibility that the time was tampered with, then we must doubt that human's testimony. Please believe me. Then maybe it's a misunderstanding? I never misunderstand. Coming together! You said you checked all the clocks inside the building. Isn't that right, Fuyuhiko? Yeah, none of the clocks had the wrong time. But what if all those clocks have been messed with? What? All the clocks? So even if you checked all the clocks inside the building, there's no way you'd have noticed it. I see. So the killer messed with the time inside the whole building by changing all the clocks. <laughs> So that's what it was. This is truly fantastic! Now's not the time to be pleased. If the Then we can only rely on that at time of death. It's clearly 7.30 a.m. Crap! If the time in the build, then we can only rely on the time of death. It's clearly 7... The problem is what time would set in our time. Are there any clues that can be used to... If only I heard the sound when he fell. I agree with that. That's right. We should have heard the sound he made when he fell. Wasn't it that rumbling noise? Rumbling? I thought it was just an earthquake, so I went back to sleep. Well, a huge body fell from the fourth floor to the first, and the pillar fell with it. It's obvious we'd hear the impact sound. We heard that noise, too. It was when we were gathered at the Strawberry House Lounge. What is it, Sonia? Oh, well, that sound everyone heard? I did not hear it at all. Huh? You probably didn't hear it because you were sleeping. I could not sleep at all. I was awake the whole night with hunger pings. There's nothing to worry about. What's important is that rumbling noise anyway. If we use that rumbling sound as a reference, we might be able to figure out how much our time was off. I heard that sound probably around 5.30 in the morning. Huh? 
You can tell? I instantly woke up and left my room. And that's when I saw the clock in the lounge. Up to my work, Akane! I see! Nekomaru's alarm went off at 7.30. And if we heard the sound of his impact at 5.30, that means our time was off by two hours. Two hours? That much? We were starving pretty badly. There's no way we would have noticed. Plus, the funhouse has no windows. And there weren't any Monokuma announcements either. However, for what reason did the killer alter our perception of time? The reason is obvious. So they can lure out just Nekomaru. If you messed with the clocks and used a specific thing, you definitely get Nekomaru to the tower alone, right? From there, the killer's plan was a splendid success. That's all it means. use of the Monokuma Tai Chi activity in the morning. How did they use it? We were required to go to Great Tower every morning at 7 a.m. for that activity, right? But if they mess with all the clocks inside the building, what would that do to us? We wouldn't be able to attend on time. This radio clock had the exact time. That's right. In doing so, the killer was able to lure him to the tower by himself at the precise time. When I witnessed Nekomaru early in the morning... If I recall, you witnessed Nekomaru around 5 a.m. And if that time was also two hours off, it should have been 7 a.m. Yeah, at that time, he was heading over to Monokuma Tai Chi, right on schedule. I see. Now that I think about it, I realize what Monokuma meant when he said those words. <gasps> He didn't even ask you yet! When you said everyone, you were including us, right? We thought we came to the tower on time, but in truth, it was way past the meeting time. Aw, jeez! That's... well, how should I put it? Uh, what was it? You know, tripping over a foot, or something like that. Are you talking about tripping over someone else's fault? Wrong! Liar! That's not it! Th that's definitely the correct answer. Let's just ignore the peanut gallery. The number of suspects has drastically decreased. Hey, why would that decrease the number of suspects? You'll know I'm not lying when you listen to what Fuyuhiko's going to say next. Huh? What the hell do you mean? You witnessed Nekomaru going toward the tower. Did something else happen after that? Are you talking about that alarm? Hmm. Alarm? A little while after I witnessed Nekomaru, the clock in the Strawberry House Lounge started going off. Plus, it was just before that rumbling sound occurred. That's it. So that's what it is. If Nekomaru died when the rumble happened, then whoever doesn't have an alibi at the time is the prime suspect. Really? Was there anyone who didn't have an alibi at that time? I... remember now. The sound was so loud I couldn't help bolting from my room. There was one guy who never left the lounge. We were both on the same floor. It's pretty weird that bastard never came out of his guest room. Which means that person does not have an alibi for when Nekomaru fell? Who is it? The only one! The one who wasn't there. It's you, right, Nagito? 
That's right! Nagito wasn't there! It was just me, Gundam, and Fuyuhiko. You didn't come out, even though the alarm was going off like crazy. You weren't in your room, were you? If that's the case, where were you? Please, say something! If you don't hurry up and answer, I'm gonna suicide dive you! If I may be frank, even if I wanted to go to the lounge, I couldn't. You couldn't? What do you mean? <laughs> it's merely the foolish talk of the week. Not only did I not hear the alarm, I never even heard that rumbling sound. You're definitely fucking lying. Uh, however, that is also true for me. It is obvious that I did not hear the alarm in Strawberry House. But I did not hear the rumbling sound either. Is that not strange? To be honest, it's not just them. The same goes for me too. I was in a pretty deep sleep. So I thought that's why I couldn't hear it. But it wasn't that. I probably couldn't hear it at all. Couldn't hear it? What does that mean? You still don't know. Think about what the three of us who didn't hear a sound have in common. Sonia and Chiaki, the three of you were staying in deluxe rooms, right? If I recall, the deluxe rooms are... The reason we could not hear the rumbling noise... That's right. It was because the deluxe rooms have superior sound insulation. You actually noticed that. Nice catch, Hajime. Are you using your ultimate reserve course student talent? Now then, you guys must understand by now, right? Hold on a sec! <laughs> Why? Well, that fact just now is a very important clue. something I want to ask you. When the alarm rang at the Strawberry House Lounge, you rushed over there too, right? What's wrong with that? If the bell of catastrophe rings throughout the night, it is the universe's providence to stop it. Why were you able to hear it? Hear what? I mean, you were also staying in a deluxe room, right? Nagito was staying in a deluxe room in the same house on the same floor. And he couldn't even hear it. So why were you able to hear that alarm? Now that you mention it... Gundam? There is only one possibility. You weren't in your room at the time. That's why, even though you were staying in a deluxe room, you still went to the lounge. Am I right? Gundam, um, you have some sort of explanation. 
right? Gundam probably couldn't return to his room because of Fuyuhiko. <laughs> Me? After you saw Nekomaru heading to the tower, you stayed at the lounge for a while. Am I correct? Until the moment that alarm started ringing, right? If you were in the lounge for that long, the killer who had left earlier obviously wouldn't be able to go back. Even though Mekamaru's murder was a death trap that utilized the alarm in his chest, the killer still needed to prepare the murder in advance. Like putting Mekamaru in sleep mode and tying him up with the wire. In order to do that, the killer needed to be waiting for Nekamaru at the tower. Which means when Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekamaru, the killer was already at the tower. And once they tried to go back, they couldn't because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. In their original plan, the killer should have returned to their room before the alarm in the lounge went off. And they were supposed to stay in their room. Which means they wouldn't have heard the alarm or the rumbling sound, thus proving they were in the room. Just like us. The best case scenario would have been if those two in the lounge had gone and checked the deluxe rooms. After all, if they personally saw the killer sleeping in their room, it gives the killer a stronger alibi. Unfortunately, they failed to secure that alibi. I was in the lounge. So the killer couldn't go back to their room, and ended up hearing the lounge's alarm. But why'd you come out? You should have hid till the excitement died down. If Gundam tried to hide, and if those two went to his room to check on him, he would have been found out. That would have been the worst possible outcome. That's why he couldn't just stay hidden. If those two had just checked the deluxe rooms as planned, that would have been ideal, but how ironic. The moment Fuyuhiko set foot in the lounge, your plan was doomed. The Gundam? Please. Answer me this. Including myself in my four dark devas of destruction, how many ears do we possess? Huh? The answer is ten. That means I have five times the hearing of a normal human. Is that your argument? You bastard. Do you understand the situation you're in right now? D do not panic. At the time, I left my room to go to the bathroom. By coincidence, I heard the alarm. That's right. That's all it was. Are you saying it was just a coincidence? And yet, I'm being suspected by all of you. It seems it was actually horrible timing on my part. I see. You're still holding out. Well, you don't have to admit it. We're going to decide who the killer is with the majority vote anyway. So, why don't we just go ahead and start voting? It's obvious that Gundam is the killer. Uh, hold on a sec. You know, Hajime, this class trial, this killing, it's merely the opening act, you know. Hey! What do you mean the class trial is just the opening act? Perhaps I should say it's just a farce. Just a boring farce. Seriously! Let's just hurry up and finish this before I collapse from poor health. Nagito, something definitely happened to you, didn't it? At some point during the investigation, your behavior became even weirder. What? What actually happened? Did you discover something? <laughs> well, let's just leave that thing for later. Ah, you said opening act again! <sighs> Please hold on! But he's completely shut up. Gundam! <laughs> I was simply at a loss for words. In fact, I shall deny the very basis. Since the beginning? Based on your assumption, I hung Nekomaru from the fourth floor of the tower and made the floor descend to the first floor. From there, after returning to Strawberry House, I, although going to and fro is busy enough as it is. I see. The contact elevator was broken. As I recall, the killer tampered with the Great House control panel. Plus, 
the stuffed elevator should have been facing the grape house side. If so, the human who used the elevator would have left it at grape house. For these reasons, it's an indisputable fact that the killer destroyed the elevator at Grape House. And what's wrong with that? If the elevator was broken at Grape House. However, I was already at Strawberry House, which means your assumption is clearly wrong. Are you serious? <laughs> That element. The only means of travel between the two houses. As long as that elevator was broken, your assumption collapses. Plus, the elevator was broken at Grape House. That the killer cannot return to Strawberry House. Since I was at Strawberry, there's no question that the fuck would have been different if they had an accomplice. Or if there was a secret passageway. How much longer do you plan? Why don't we stop this already? That elevator. The only means of travel between the. As long as that elevator. Your assumption. Plus, the elevator broken at Grape House. But the killer cannot reach. Since I was at Strawberry, there's no question that the following. It would have been different if they hadn't. Or if there was a secret passageway. How much longer? Why don't we stop this already? That elevator. What? The only means of travel between. No, that's wrong. No, there should have been another way to move between the two houses without the elevator. Such a method does not exist! Then why don't we ask the person who actually used that method? You're the only one! Nagito, you should know. Huh? What are you talking about? Don't play dumb. You appeared so suddenly that one time because you used that method, right? There's a secret passage connecting the first floor of Strawberry House to the third floor of Grape House. Isn't that right? Jeez. Once again, I let the reserve course show up. But you're right. There's a door on the floor of the Octagon, which is on the first floor of Strawberry House. After I opened the door and went down... Surprise, surprise! I ended up in the Monokuma Archive. Meaning, the third floor and the fourth floor are actually connected. Plus, once you've cleared the final dead room once, you can pass through it as many times as you want. If they used that secret passage, they could have gone between the two houses as much as they want. Infinity Unlimited Flame! However, what if the killer was unaware of the existence of the final dead room? There's no way they didn't know. That is merely an illusion, you <laughs> If you value your life. There's no way I can stop. Did you say? Don't make me angry. Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes, provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! I already proved the secret passage exists. The secret passage was at the Octagon. Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the Octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If 
you don't want to drown in the maelstrom of blind confusion. At least pray to the key which dwells in the light! Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't want to drown in the maelstrom of blood... Allow me to cut through those words! The wire used to string up Nekomaru's body, the hammer that looked like the weapon, and the chain on the door in the tower. Those are all the items that weren't in Funhouse. The only place I can think of is the Octagon. There were various weapons and tools there. I'm pretty sure I saw stuff like wires, hammers, and chains too. Since those items were used in the crime, there's no doubt that the killer went to the Octagon. <laughs> If that's the case, they obviously know about the secret passage, too. <laughs> it seems this is the end. Normally, we'd end up listening to Hajime lecture us with a very long summary of the case. But there's no reason to waste any more time on this opening act. So I'm going to end this right now. Uh, hey, what are you... First of all, by messing with all the clocks in the building, Gundam tried to lure only Nekomaru. The elevator was probably broken by that point. Thanks to that, Nekomaru wasn't able to go to Grape Tower, which was supposed to be the meetup point. So he tried going over to Strawberry Tower, just like we did when we found out the elevator was broken. Well, it's obvious he'd attempt that. At that time, we didn't know the two towers were the exact same place. Also, the button in Strawberry Hall wasn't broken so he was easily able to enter Strawberry Tower. But surprise! Gundam was waiting for Nekomaru's arrival! Ho hold on. If Nekomaru didn't go to Strawberry Tower, what would the killer have done then? Their plan was a balancing act of uncertainties. But even if they failed, they probably wouldn't have minded. They can just greet everyone the next morning as if nothing happened, and come up with a different plan. And... Without such a risky plan, they wouldn't have been able to lure him at all. I'm going to continue summarizing the case, okay? Through this, Gundam successfully lured Nekomaru to Strawberry Tower. There's no way he could fight head-on with the robotic Nekomaru. So by pressing the goodnight button, he rendered Nekomaru powerless without fighting him. Hold on! You, you What did you just say? That I didn't battle? Hmm? What's wrong with that? Don't mess with me! Don't mess with me! Why are you angry all of a sudden? You fools! Do not understand! You don't understand at all! Ha! You make me laugh! I don't understand anything. What does that mean? Maybe I'm just a human destined for hell. However, I cannot finish just yet. I cannot finish! What do you intend to do? It's obvious! I'm going to destroy your illusory assumptions! Are you saying you still have more? Your words. You st However, that button was on the back of Nekumaru's neck. To press it, I'd have to get behind him. It's not easy to get the drop on Coach Nekomaru. It's even more difficult if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Just as I thought. True, Flail. <laughs> if you want to set me up as the killer, at least surpass your own human limitations. That's wrong, Gunda. You're the one who's wrong. <laughs> Such a wonderful line. Listen well, I shall teach you two tips for making someone admit their defeat. First, you must crush them with your own overwhelming power. You must provide a reason that will persuade that human. You have... Uh, 
I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesized! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesized! Show me the cadaver! Show me the cadaver! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesized! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesized! For the Tanaka Empire! For the Tanaka Empire! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesized! It's Nekobaru's back! Do you really think I can get behind him so easily? This is the end! Even if you didn't get behind Nekomaru, you should have been able to press the button on the back of his neck. As long as you have the power of the hamsters you keep with you! Oh? Are you seriously saying he used his hamsters? Of course that'd be impossible for a normal hamster. But it would've been possible for Gunny. In fact, we saw that with our very own eyes. Right? You mention it. After Ibuki was killed in the music venue, one of Gundam's hamsters retrieved the piece of wallpaper from the baton lighting, right? Hey, with your friends and their exceptionally smart brains, it must have been possible to secretly get one of them behind Mekamaru. How about it, Gundam? <laughs> <laughs> Not just myself, but you actually brought up how splendid my subordinates are. <sighs> I have no recourse but to admit it. Admit it? It appears I've obtained a one-way ticket to hell. Fine! Then you must trample me underfoot and advance. Victory can only be built upon a foundation of corpses. Now, trample this life! Pull the curtain strings of this worthless performance with your own two hands!
everything that happened in this case. Let's first go over the many tricks to get. First, they destroyed the contact elevator. This separated Nagito and the others in Strawberry House from our group in Grape House. Next, they lured Nekomaru out by himself by turning back all the clocks in the Fun House by two hours. Additionally, in order to secure an alibi, the killer went to the Strawberry House Lounge and set the wall clock's alarm to 5.30 a.m. After finishing their preparations, the killer went to Strawberry Tower with the necessary tools in hand. They obtained these tools from the Octagon, which you can enter once you clear the final dip. This means the killer discovered the secret of the Fun House faster than anybody else. That secret being, Strawberry House and Grape House are actually the same building. On the morning of the incident, Nekomaru woke up. There, Fuyuhiko, who was at the lounge by coincidence, witnessed Nekomaru. According to Fuyuhiko's testimony, that was around 5 a.m. By that point, the killer had already messed with our perception of time. In actuality, Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekomaru at 7 a.m. That's also the same time Monokuma Tai Chi begins. However, because the contact elevator was broken, Nekomaru was unable to go to Grape Tower. So he decided to try going to Strawberry Tower. But the killer was waiting for him there. With the power of hamsters, they were able to press the good night button on the back of Nekomaru's neck. This forced him to enter sleep mode rendering him immobile. From there, the killer began preparing to use the ultimate weapon. First, they set the alarm in Nekomaru's chest to 7.30 a.m. so he'd wake up. Then they tied him up with a metal wire, tied the tip of the wire. After leaving Strawberry Tower, the killer then destroyed the door button to Strawberry Hall. They did this to keep us from entering Strawberry Tower, and to keep us from discovering the secret of the building structure that they used to kill Nekomaru. Then, they used the secret octagon passageway to travel to Grape House. After arriving at Grape Hall, they pressed the button to open the door to the tower. When that happened, the elevator-like floor of the tower began descending, and Nekomaru's body was still inside. The killer entered Grape Tower to see if their setup was successful, and placed a hammer on the floor to look like the weapon, then wrapped a chain around the back door. This was done to make us falsely believe we couldn't enter the tower from Strawberry Hall. With this, the killer finished their setup and tried to go back to their room using the secret passage, so they could craft their alibi when Negumaru died from the fall. But something unexpected happened. Fuyuhiko, who saw Negumaru earlier, was still at the lounge. As a result, the killer couldn't return to their room, and with no options available, time ran out. The lounge's wall clock alarm started ringing at 5.30. To avoid a worst-case scenario, the killer was forced to appear in front of Fuyuhiko with the others. When the wall clock's alarm rang, that was also the same time Nekomaru was waking up. He woke up while he was still hanging upside down, so he couldn't help but sway his body powerfully. Originally, the loop of wire was only supposed to slip off the doorknob, but because there was a heavier load than expected, the doorknob ended up breaking. Nekomaru fell from the fourth floor all the way to the first floor. He crashed into the pillar, which decapitated him on impact, and died. The sound of Nekomaru's impact echoed throughout the funhouse. However, by this point, the killer's plan was about to fail. Meaning, the killer is someone who wouldn't have heard the alarm if they were in the deluxe room. They also wouldn't have been able to return to their guest room because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. That someone is Gundam Tanaka.
<laughs> that was splendid. Stop. Stop using weird words to avoid the truth. Or I'll friggin' kill you myself! I cannot believe it. You... You killed... Nakumaru? I cannot believe something like that! You don't wish to forgive me? Do you feel regret? Then finish it! My beloved, deadly foes, let the voting time begin! Must be the will of causality. You. <laughs> Let's make history. Sensing even my subtle killing intent, as expected of you, Nekomaru. The scorching, stinging, tense atmosphere! I've been a team manager for so long, this is great! Hmm. That's a great one. And what is your reason? Do you intend to resolve this situation by killing me? <laughs> I am the Warlock, Gundam Tanaka! I do not cling to any trivial reason. I'm simply going to kill you because your very existence is an annoyance! <laughs> In response to your spirit, I shall kill you with all of my might! I won't go easy on you! Don't waste your breath on cowardly tactics! Necromoro Nidai! That is... <laughs> Let me tell you this. You weakling! Fall, my tears. If you flinch, you will die! Let me ask. Um... Fine. Listen well! I shall engulf this world. I renounce you! You. But... Damn it! Fine. <laughs> F 
fall, my tears. Oh. You... Let's make history. <laughs> well? <laughs> My name is Gundam Tanaka! Fade like dust in the wind. <laughs> yes, indeed! <laughs> Please wait! I beg of you! Huh? I beg of you! How pitiful. Uh, hmm. Fine. What is it, my four dark devas of destruction? Are you worried about me? Oh, my feared four dark devas of destruction, that is not like you at all. However, there is no need to fear. In this world, I am only a temporary visitor. I was simply visiting for a moment, and now that my duty is complete, I must return to the darkness. That is why, until the very end, Pride, conceit, courage, insolence, fearful of nothing, daunted by nothing. Let us laugh uproariously. <laughs> that is Gundam Tanaka, open sesame pandemonium. <laughs> Let's give it everything we've got. Right. You are right. then. <laughs> hey, hey! It's not like that. <laughs> huh. <laughs> hey, hey. Right?
Obvious. Monokuma appears! Now then. What's this? What's the matter? <sighs> hmm? <laughs> well. Hmm. Hello. Hey. Don't even know? Isn't that right? Of course! But... Who knows? Hey. <laughs> hmm? Well... Right? Getting all riled up. Hmm. <laughs> no, no. Shing. <sighs> huh? Hey. Yep. I. Right. Thank <laughs> you. 